Hey guys, welcome to the daily update, which is something I'm going to start doing on a regular basis. It's going to be um, pretty much a Monday through Friday thing. And I want to talk about different articles and different things that I read. And I'm going over this whole story with uh, FTX. And if you're into crypto, I mean, if you're not into crypto, you probably truly understand what's going on with this. And we all don't know the whole story yet, but it doesn't look too positive um, from the outcome when it comes to um, uh, Sam Bankman Freed. And all that stuff. So I can't totally comment it, but I've been kind of uh, diving into it quite a bit to find out everything. And I learned a lot more about financial education after all of that. Um, and it, it was actually a valuable teacher, but I feel terrible for people that uh, lost. Um, sounds like they might have lost everything. So uh, my heart goes out to them. Um, one of the reasons I want to talk about this is I do some investing myself. I do, I'm not a big player into it, but I have, of course, some type of a portfolio um, that goes and, 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 um, gets it's kind of split apart. That portfolio is diversified. So got me thinking today, many businesses, uh, are they are they diversifying too much? Or are they diversifying uh, too little? Um, too much obviously can be an issue. Now, some companies can manage that and do that, and they can have her, you know, 10 different services and make sure they can maintain the quality in all 10 of them. It's hard. It's rare. Usually they're bigger companies, um, but it does happen. And then there's the other way around where they're so narrow niched that they're only doing one or two things when they could be doing four or five things and creating extra streams of streams of uh, revenue. So I'm going over this article. You could probably see it on your screen right here. It's a diversification strategy. And I kind of thought the article was pretty good. I'll put a link into it at the very bottom of the, the video on the YouTube uh, link, but talks about disruption for new products, new markets, and new marketing strategies, innovation, new ca products with new capabilities, processes, and technologies and inorganic growth diversified portfolio with partners, mergers, and acquisitions. And obviously this is not really geared toward a service business necessarily, but it kind of is. And the whole key, the whole key rather of doing all of this and talking about this is, is your business diversified enough? Now, when a company again, my and my father used to have this famous term, it was called jackass of all trades, not jack of all trades, because a person cannot be great at everything. Um, and I, I know some business, in fact, we have one here in New Jersey that are colleagues of mine that have an excellent training program too as well. And they, uh, their company, their core company um, started out as one particular niche and ended up doing about 10 or 11, but they were a 30 to $40 million a year business uh, when they sold. So they obviously knew how to do something right. I'm pretty, pretty sure they probably weren't perfect at everything. Nobody is. Uh, but they seem like they scaled it uh, appropriately. They hired the people to come in and, and and trained accordingly. But I know they started out as one niche that had nothing to do with what their primary business was known for at the end when they sold. But they diversified correctly. They had enough there, and it probably took a business that might have done two or three million dollars a year to thirty or forty million dollars a year because they diversified in these different categories. My whole point is: Are you losing money on your business? Are you losing revenue on your business? Are you are minimizing the amount that you can actually do with your business? Now, if you're a one truck wonder or one company, it's tough to do a whole bunch of different services. But you're also might be a one truck wonder because you're not offering these extra services. Um, for example, you know, before COVID, we were very, pretty relatively small company. We still are pretty relatively small. Um, very small compared to some, and uh, but we we found out that getting into doing power washing, you know, cleaning pavers and resanding them and all this stuff, I, I won't bore you with the details, was a revenue stream that we can do. Um, it takes time, it takes skill, um, it's it's definitely a quite involved, and and I learned some of the negative sides to it, which means you know cost. You couldn't schedule jobs necessarily in a timely manner like you like to because weather was very, it's a very weather driven business. I guess that's the best way to say it. But we found that when we diversified into it, we were able to have this extra stream of revenue, which actually guided a portion of our business to grow much higher. In fact, I just put an article out today for a service company where I said our hard services division just year to year had grown by 30%. Well, these pavers and these extra things we were doing are part of that process of having extra 30% of hard surface revenue. It doesn't go into other things like carpet cleaning upholstery cleaning, so forth and so on. It goes into the hard surface, which is retiling grout for us is our biggest part of our business, stone cleaning, um, sealing, uh, you know, the, again, working with pavers and concrete and things of that nature. That became a whole new separate division of the business. And when we decided to go that route, I invested in mentors and trainers. I know that term sounds thin, but really I didn't, there were things I just did not know. So I, I 
paid to have somebody train me and teach me and our company on how to do these things and how to market these things correctly and, and a whole program that's that's geared more to the power wash community and stuff. So because I knew when I got into it, I knew this one small piece of the niche, but I wanted to understand the entire area itself. So um, this is a pretty good article. I mean, when it comes down to it, I, I would definitely suggest you look into it from that standpoint. Again, not totally geared towards service businesses, but the message I wanted to leave people with today was the fact that uh, – it's definitely worth some interest in diversification. You don't want to over diversify and really shrink down the things you're really good at. At the same time, you don't want to leave money on the table for your competitors to go out there and do as well. So guys, I appreciate your time today. Appreciate it. Again, we're going to come to you with a daily show starting this upcoming Monday. And that's the goal. And it's not always going to be here in the studio. It might be, you know, something on the road. It might be whatever it is, but we're going to come to you on a daily basis with this uh, little content that we can deliver on a different uh, subject. All right. Enjoy your weekend. Appreciate it. We're right around the corner from Christmas. We hope you're all ready for it and we hope your family is safe and uh, we will see you soon. Feel free to visit us at robmlion.com. You could always go there and subscribe, hit the like and subscribe button here in uh, here on YouTube. And uh, again, do that. Uh, I think we have a course we're actually giving away, which is pretty cool. Um, I think it's a $40, $50 value, whatever it is. And it's a, about a 30 minute course that's going to talk to you about uh, five things that your service business needs to know pretty much right off the bat right now, getting going into some of these hard times we're facing. So go there, subscribe to it. We'll send it over to you. And I think you really enjoy it. All right. Have a good day and we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.